All right, come on in the house, y'all. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Love Coach Sessions Live, and welcome to the show, Secrets of the Mind of the Man, where we talk about how men think when it comes to dating, relationships, and love. And I'm your man, KTJ, and we are ready to get into it. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Um, if you need to get yourself some popcorn, get yourself something to eat, something to drink. I got my guys uh, in the in the. I'm going to introduce them in just a moment, but welcome to the show, you guys. Um, and uh, you guys know we are here every every Monday at um, 9.30 p.m. as we, ever, we get our show going. You guys know we talk about dating, we talk about relationships, we talk about love. And today we're talking about what makes a woman attractive to a man. What makes a woman attractive to a man? So uh, I want you guys to hit, hit those... I'll tell you what, before, as we get started, drop in the in the chat where you are watching this show from. We want to know where you are watching this show from. Uh, drop it in the chat. Shout out your city, your state, where you watching the show from. Tiana, how are you, lady? Thank you so much for popping in. We appreciate the love. Where y'all watching the show from? Let us know. Of course, y'all know I'm in the A. That's where we're making it happen. But I, I, that's what I love about this social media thing. We all over. Come on in. Let us know where y'all watching the show from as we get it going. We got a great show going. All right. Cheryl's here from New York, New York. Yes, yes. You guys drop in the chat. Where y'all from? Where y'all where y'all watching the show from? Yes, yes, yes. We're here. Um, and we're gonna have a good show, man. I got the guys ready to drop some some knowledge, drop some information in the back. <laughs> they they in the green room right now, getting ready to rip this thing up. But uh, let me know, y'all. Where y'all watching the show from? Where y'all checking in from? Drop your city and state in the chat. If you're watching this on the YouTube channel, you guys, we have the um, the chat is wide open over here. Uh, if you're watching it on the Facebook channel, that's that's cool, totally cool as well. Uh, you can just drop your city and state right there as well. Yes, yes, yes. We like to know where people are checking us, checking in with us. <laughs> yes, we are still friends, Demetria. <laughs> Thank you so much for popping in. Thank you so much. Demetria is having an event here in Atlanta, and uh, I believe it's in October. Uh, she's a she's a big time player, and uh, I'll be doing some work with her in her at her event in October. I'm looking forward to that. So, well, you know what, you guys? Uh, it's it's a beautiful day. I want you guys to just come on in. Uh, today we're talking about it. What, what makes a woman attractive to a man? And I got my guys. I'm going to go ahead and bring the fellas in so we can start getting this conversation going. Uh, Gerald, Gerald, we got the green screen on you. <laughs> I'm going to pop you out for a minute. Got the green screen on you. Uh, let me see. We've got my boys. My fellas are in the house. Hey, Gerald, you might have to unplug and plug it back up <laughs> to get it going again. But uh, I got my guys here. <laughs> no, it's, the, it's Demetria. She's in here. All right, you guys, um, if you would, go around the, the circle here and introduce yourself. Uh, I'm going I'm to wait. For, we get Gerald back in here. He might have to unplug and plug it back up, and we'll get him going again. But, gentlemen, please introduce yourself to our guest. Tell us who you are, uh, where, maybe where you're from, and uh, an interesting fact about your dating experience. All right. How's that? <laughs> Josh, you first. Uh, my name is Josh. I'm from southern New Jersey. And um, dating in the 30s is wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. James, how about you? What's good? What's good? What's good? My name is James Bush from the Mind of a Man podcast. Um, therapist dating in the 30s 
like Josh said, it's wonderful. Um, I'm at the end of it. I finally became exclusive with somebody or so like that. But I enjoyed the experience because I got to see a profile that I like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Jeff, what's going on, good brother? Hey, what's going on, brother? Uh, hey, this is Jeffrey. I'm um, a certified uh, professional relationship coach, and I specialize in helping men become better daters, husbands, fathers, and partners. And i um, happy to be on the show. Dating in the 50s is uh, a little bit stressful, but uh, we make it do what it's going to do. <laughs> I like it. I like it. See, see, one of the reasons I like this panel already is we have uh, various ages that we're dealing with. Um, and, and Gerald, I tell you what, if you just um, turn off your camera altogether and you just um, do your still shot, we'll, we'll just have you on as a still shot. All right. Gerald, tell us who you are, where you're from, and you know what? Yeah, tell us, tell us, tell us around your age, uh, your age group, and you know, and, and tell us a little bit about your dating experience, relationship experience. Well, uh, my name's Gerald. I'm in the Boston area. Um, I'm in my mid 40s. Actually, turned 45 yesterday. Yesterday okay. was my birthday. Happy birthday, brother! Thank you, thank you. And uh, dating in my 40s is a lot different than it was dating in my 20s, I can tell you that. Um, I am a trauma therapist where I deal with uh, individuals that are struggling with things from their past. So I help a lot of people figure out why things go wrong in relationships, why they get triggered, um, and why they're dealing with processing things within the relationship rather than doing it on their own. Um, I have a men's uh, group that I facilitate, and I have a singles group that I facilitate, um, and I just walk them through that process. So, all right, all right, all right. So let's let's get into it, fellas. Let's talk about it. Um, attraction to uh, women. What, what's your what's your feeling about this topic today? Uh, what makes a woman attractive to you? What what makes a woman attractive? And uh, we could we could kind of do this popcorn style. We don't, we don't have to be all formal, you know. Uh, just just uh, share your thoughts. Share your thoughts. Who wants to go first? You know, I, I, I'll jump in. And I love sh uh, shooting the first shot. Um, but uh, what makes a woman attractive to me is a woman who is completely comfortable in her feminine energy. Um, feminine energy is so powerful. It's uh, it's uh, intoxicating especially when it's not weaponized. Uh, so I, I'm looking for a woman who is balanced, um, comfortable in her feminine energy, and just not about no games. Because quite frankly, um, I'm at that age where I'm old enough to date you or your mama. Don't make me make you my stepdaughter. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. All right, Josh. What you think? What 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 uh, makes what is it attractive to you? What makes a woman attractive in your eye? So when we had kind of talked about this previously, I kind of jotted down some things. So <clears throat> not in any kind of particular order. I just thought, um, like, what are some of the things that are most important to me? And some things kind of surprised me when I actually thought about it. Um, I mean, personality, that's obviously going to be, you know, like a, a, a big thing, you know, yeah, when you first see a woman, you are attracted to their physical features, but then they open their mouth and you find out if you, you are attracted to that personality, if they're sweet, kind, nice, you know, things like that. But taste in music is actually an important thing to me as well um, that I've kind of found out that because... And that will also tell a lot about a woman uh, if, if, if they uh, have a limited like in taste of music or certain things. Because you can't vibe with a woman if you are, uh, you know, if you're not eclectic and have a, like a wide variety of, of, of taste of music. Um, putting others first, someone who's not selfish, affectionate, someone who doesn't necessarily take themselves seriously all the time. Um, positive, someone who's intelligent, witty, good conversationalist, good sense of humor, 
doesn't say no to a lot of things. Like, mm. is it able able to be open and and try things? That is a turnoff. Yeah, when, when, yeah. When someone says no all the time. Yeah, you know, I, I forgot to mention to the to our audience uh, of uh, ladies who, who there's some ladies here who are looking for some good men, and um, you know, you guys, I I, I handpick these guys particularly uh, because I know that they're solid uh, individuals. They, they, these, these men have their own incomes. They have their own businesses or they have their own hustle. They have their own thing going on. Um, and they are high, uh, what I call a high value man. I, I, I in my book, right. Uh, in my book, you guys represent a, a high value man, high quality men. And so, um, you know, I, I want I want y'all those who are if you're interested, you know, look, you might be able to shoot your shot tonight. If you if you uh, <laughs> if you hear something good, um, you know, you, you might be able to you might be able to shoot your shot. Slide in the DM and let me know. Hi there. <laughs> let me know what, what, what's what's popping with it. So, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, James, how about you? Uh, what do you find attractive? In a woman, uh, that's a number of things, but I just get right to the chase. Accountability. Um, when things go awry, when you know all the gloss and everything about a woman goes away, or so, I want to know the person is accountable. You know, yeah, when you can have those hard conversations and how you can manage it. Um, from my training, on um, John Gottman, one of the gurus in this kind of stuff, says that sixty-nine. No, him and Mike Dow. That's his. Uh, says that sixty-nine percent of all relationship con- conflicts can't be resolved. And so when you look at it from Wait, that point, oh, oh, hold on, hold on, James, your, your mic is a little bit low. Is, is there a way you could, you could bring it up a little? Uh, I, look, what, what you just said was so important. I don't want it. I don't want it to get missed. We go. We go. We good right there. We good right there. Okay, that's better. I, I think that's better. Uh, all right. So he said that sixty nine percent of um, a lot of relationship conflicts are unsolvable. And so when you look at that, it's that being with that type of individual who can work with you. Yes, we know about the individuals who can go down and to Santa Domingo or San Juan or Miami and get a BBL or a mommy makeover or so like that. But how is it when things get rough and the person that you have in your corner, how can you work through these some of these issues? Are they manageable? And those are some of the things that I look for. So if I'm meeting a person or so, then okay, yeah, the first date was cool. I'm wearing for the, the gloss, waiting for the gloss to wear off. And when that wears off, what does life with that person look like? You know, have we plateaued? Do we have good communication? Or maybe we just man plateaued at a point and it was two days, it was fun, and see you later. You know, God bless you. Send you a Christmas card. Those are some of the things that I look for when it comes to I'm searching for a suitable mate. Yeah. Good stuff. Good opening statement. Uh Gerald, how about you? For me, I gotta be honest with you. Um I'm a bit of a bookworm and a reader and a geek. So for me, the one of the most important qualities in a woman is a quality known as being a sapiosexual, because I'm a sapiosexual. Um, I, I go after the intellect and I'm attracted to a woman's mind. Um, that really draws me in. Um, something about a woman that if you can connect with her intellectually, you can connect with her spiritually, you can connect with her emotionally. I think um, beauty is in it then being the eye of the beholder, right? So for me, that, that brings about beauty in a woman. So I go straight for the brain. Um, after the brain, I look for the eyes. Um, she's got to have some beautiful eyes that kind of draws you in. Um, and then, you know, always for me, it's a good physique. I, I'm, you know, I'm at the gym five days a week. So I'm looking for someone that I can grow old with and grow old with gracefully, not all grow old with decrepitly. So, you know, someone that has a, you know, an understanding of physical fitness or desires to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Those are important to me. Got you. Got you. I think I froze up. Am I frozen? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, I got a I got a thunderstorm above head, and um, let me see if I can bring Jeffrey back in. I can see him. Oh shoot! Yeah, uh, there we go. Jeff is back. All right. So, um, 
Okay, good, good opening statements. Um, so there's three things that uh, you guys, uh, and I want to get your opinions on this. There's three things that the conversations I've been having with men um, that uh, that attracts men to the women that that they're attracted to, and the three things are clothing, how she dress, how she presents, colors, and confidence. Right. So, uh, you know, as I was I was typing it, I like to do my own little research. Right. I typed in um, what makes what makes a man attracted to a woman. And guess what? What word kept coming up? Yeah. Sundresses. (laughs) Sundresses kept coming up. The word sundresses (laughs) kept, kept coming up. And I was like, that's just like what what the what brothers were saying. Like, you know, so. Really, like, let, let's talk about it, fellas. Um, outer appearance. Look, look, we we not we not here to sugarcoat. <laughs> okay, we not here to sugarcoat. We gonna tell the truth. How much um, value do you place on um, a woman's outer beauty, Jeff? You first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump into it. Well, you know, I I make sure that when my woman looks at me, she has something appealing to look at. You know, I work out. Um, I, I'm pretty fit. Um, I eat well. I don't drink excessively. I'll have a cigar every now and then. Um, but overall, I live a pretty healthy life. And I want a woman to reflect that same thing. Uh, Understand something, ladies. Y'all can say all y'all want about physical attraction and all this other stuff not being important. And, you know, that should be way down on the list. But let's go talk about it. If he's not the right height, if he bald or he got hair or he light or he dark, he doesn't meet your criteria or every little section on your list, you will exclude us in a second. But the expectation is that a man should accept a woman where she is just as she is. No, player, you better take care of yourself. Keep your hygiene up. Make sure your hair, whether it's an afro or locks or whatever, that it's kept. And um, you know how to uh, put on a show for me because um, every now and then I'm going to expect a show. I'm going to give you a show. I'm going to need one in return. Well said. Well said. Uh, Josh, what's your thoughts? I think that there's a certain amount of physical beauty that attracts me to a girl um, initially, but I weigh heavily the personality on the situation. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a 10 for me. Uh, You know, I've dated women you know, from various ranges and there's been some very nasty, vapid women that are nines and tens and and some very beautiful inner beauty women, you know, three, four, or five. And and that kind of makes up for, you know, a physical attraction, but because I kind of weigh them all in together. So that's my that's me personally, how how I look at things. So Yes, physical attraction, the how they look, the how pretty they are, that is important, but the in, inner beauty is very important as well. Got it. Got it. Hey hey Gerald, they they, they asking for they they said they want to see you. <laughs> they, they, let's they try let's try to see if we can get this camera going. Oh man, we still got is the it green. working? Green Give it a sec. It, it might pull up in a sec. <laughs> We still got the green screen. Well, you you work on that. Uh, we, we, we'll get James in on this. James, uh, tell us, uh, what is it that attracts you to a woman uh, when we're talking about outer beauty now? Um, you know, clothing, why? Clothing, look, like how, what what attracts you to a woman? I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, be lying if I said, man, that outer beauty doesn't attract me or so with the physical features. I mean, and she keeps herself up and she looks nice and she's pleasant or so like that. So it is the main attraction, but the the mentality, personality, you know, wisdom, smarts, intelligence, accountability, that's what keeps me there. And so those are the things that I lend heavy on. I mean, 
Man, oh gosh, now I don't want you getting no um, notes, Kevin, on Kevin about this, man. But I mean, <laughs> we, we talking that talk. <laughs> but uh, be, to be on the real though, I mean, it's like they're a dime a dozen. I mean, you can find beautiful women like the Metro bus. Every 15 minutes, you're going to see someone that is very beautiful, that is very appealing, that's very attractive. But again, what does the connection look like? You know, how does the vibe, what does the rhythm look like? Is there a flow? If it's not, then man, I keep it moving. And that's just being honest. Understood, understood. And and listen, ladies, y'all could drop your questions in as well. Drop your questions in. Uh, let us let us hear what your questions is. You could drop it right in the chat, and I'm gonna read them right off through through the chat. <laughs> so let us know what it is. Uh, hey, hey, Gerald, we got that camera work working right yet? No, we still on the green. All right, let uh, us have I'm, it. I'm changing my uh, my avatar real quick, so for you guys yeah, to see that. Yeah, that that will be good. That'll help. They they just want to. You know how the ladies are. They they visual too. <laughs> 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 all right so let's let's uh we'll come back to, to gerald as he gets his uh gets his situation squared away there so um so you guys like like what's your what's your basic philosophy when it comes to um uh, uh look how about how about colors all right so we, we we got the first one clothing colors what colors uh really like get your attention when you see a woman, uh, let, let, let's go with Josh. We'll go with Josh. Do you have colors? Something like a, I love to see a woman in this color. Maybe um, if you're if you're gonna refer to like something like a sundress, yellow is is pretty, you know. But uh, I feel like we're talking about it's like uh like birds, like a peacock. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Look, we 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 gonna get to the deep stuff. <laughs> Is that deep? My surface first. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't think I have any specific colors. Um, whatever's in style, you know. I, I, you know what? It's funny. If a woman's comfortable, that's what's probably most important to me. And it's it may sound stupid, but it's you know like high heels. That's nice, but like a woman in a pair of flats, just like comfortable yeah i like i like that okay all right it, so so listen uh ladies i'm gonna put a pin in it for a minute so this th one of the reasons i assemble this this group of men is because i want you to hear that different men like different things right so so you don't have to try and be this or try and be that the best thing you can do is be yourself <laughs> and, and be your best self bring your best self to the game you know and because um, there's different different men like different things, and I, I love that. So, James, how about you? When when I see a woman wearing this color, it really gets my attention. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's white, black, red, brown, or anything. Is it clean? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I care about at the end of the day. Is what she's wearing? Is it clean? That's okay. what gets my attention. That's what man draws and gravi I'm gravitated towards. Okay. Clean. Clean, man. <laughs> okay. All right. How about you, Jeffrey? When I see a woman wearing this, she gets my attention. Uh, you, I've always been drawn to the color uh, um, purpose of it. But the main thing, though, is that you have a color as well with your skin tone that um, has a way of bringing out your best features, your highlights, uh, your mid-tones, and your lowlights uh, because your skin bounces off that color or that uh, your skin reflects that color well. Um, or, you know, a woman that can be daring, she can take patterns that are dissimilar, put them together in a way, and her sense of fashion uh, pulls it off, her, her confidence, her style. All those really, really stand out to me. So the the color purple, first of all, to answer directly, but the way she wears whatever it is that she wears, um, that pushes it over the top. Yeah, that's good. That's good. How about you, Gerald? When I see a woman wearing this color, it gets my attention. Gerald, you there? <laughs> I think you might have lost Gerald. Can you hear me? Uh, okay, I, I, we hear you. 
So I think it was Jeffrey uh, that just mentioned confidence, right? Um, confidence to me is a color. Um, I think if you wear that well, um, anything you wear, you know the statement, the clothes make the man. Um, I go the other way around. The man makes the clothes. The clothes looks good on me. And I think women who can do that, who can pull that off, um, you know, to me are, are very attractive. Women that could, you know, wear about just about anything and it looks good on them because there's a certain radiance that comes from within. There's a certain confidence that comes from within that they can pull it off and it works well with them. Okay. All right. I like it. So I got, I got a book coming out called Secrets of the Mind of a Man, which is kind of named after this show. And in the book, I, I did some research and um, there are actually some colors that make uh, that get men's attention. Right. And one 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 thing in particular I talk about is um, the dynamic between uh, the colors that a woman wears and food. <laughs> So if a woman wears clothes, colors that look like food, mango, <laughs> you know, watermelon, uh, like like all, all these uh, kind of uh, food looking colors that remind a man of food. There's two things that a man loves is, uh, you know, sex and food <laughs> and um, a, a, an attractive woman wearing wearing a color that looks like food um, raises raises his attention. Reds. You know, um, they get get a man's attention, and um, you know, snags them in. So uh, that, that that's just a little piece. The, the book is coming soon, coming very soon. But uh, yeah, th those are some good answers. How about confidence, you guys? Um, let, let, let's we're gonna go a little a, a, a layer deeper here, and and we got some questions coming through the chat as well. So I'm gonna answer some of those questions and after this. So talk to me about confidence, like. How important is confidence uh, when it comes to like meeting women, having conversations with women? Uh, Josh, what do you think? Repeat, ask again the question. Com like, how important is confidence? And and like, as you're having conversations, you're meeting women. How important is confidence? Uh, very important. I mean, you know, when you're talking to somebody who doesn't have much confidence, it it, it kind of speaks to having some issues and it's not as attractive you know when somebody's not not super confident feel like you need to overcompensate you know if you're a confident person then you need to like make up for their lack of confidence and it can be draining yeah true words true words uh gerald how about you uh where does confidence really like you just talked about it a little earlier uh share a little bit more about that like where where does confidence lie in your list of attraction so as i said earlier i'm in my mid 40s and i think in my 20s you know a young woman with some insecurities may have been cute or may have been you know interesting as a character uh flaw maybe if you will um, but today I'm, I'm looking for a woman that's confident in who she is, right? Confident in her abilities, confident and secure in who she is as a woman, right? I think Jeffrey said um, femininity and she has to be comfortable in that space when it's time to be strong, when it's time to be feminine, when it's time to be vulnerable. Um, these are things that a woman who is not necessarily been through the hardest parts of life, but who has experience will know when to navigate and how to navigate these spaces. So for me, that's very important. A woman that has that confidence and knows who she is and is not looking for a relationship to define her, is not looking for a man to define her or a career or even children, to be honest with you. Um, I've been married once before. And, um, and as a counselor, I often deal with a lot of men and women who lose their identity within the marriage, right? They lose their identity in who they are and just become a role, right? A husband or a provider or a wife or a homemaker, right? They've, they lost their identity and in their independence. So confidence is important to me. It's a big part of what I look for in a relationship. Well said, James. 
um, there's a, a statement that um was put out, uh, and it's masculine by preference. I guess if we're looking from the Latin terms, the man who finds confidence in himself gains the confidence of others. And so when I translate that to a feminine perspective or so, and I'm saying that individual is not worried about Sister Susie, Sister Betty, or any of them other ones. They know who they are, you know, and they can walk within that confidence and display that. And to me, that's powerful. That's sexy. You know, they're not uh, insecure about their own sexuality. They don't have to beg, please, uh, please coddle, or just go with the, the trends that come along. You know, they have an a, a innate sense about themselves that just says, this is who I am, accept me for it, or just leave me alone. And I think that's awesome. Because what it is, is that as a man, for me, that, and I'm only speaking for myself, I don't have to spend time, you know, trying to convince you of certain things or anything like that. You already have it. So we can go and move on other planes in a connection sense. Well said. Good stuff. Good stuff. Did we get everybody? Yeah, we. I think we did. All right, you guys. So we got a question. We got a couple of questions coming in. Uh, our girl, uh, Carla Thomas, she asked a question. May I ask, is it normal for a man to comment or like women's pictures on social media if they are married or dating somebody? What's your guys' thoughts about um, if you're if you're involved with somebody? Just like yep, you don't have to go all into it, but but because that's not necessarily the topic of the day. But um, you know, if you're seeing somebody, uh, how uh, is there uh, a problem with you? Um, Liking pictures on social media. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, anybody could pop off. I think if it's just, if it's excessive, it you know, for be, me, it, it could be a problem. Um, but I, <clears throat> I feel like I try and think about someone like a, the the my um, significant other doing the the same thing, and I, you know, people are going to have friends uh, of the opposite sex. And they're gonna put pictures on social media. Now, if a guy is like ex excessively liking a woman in a bathing suit on Instagram, you know that's gonna be a problem. You know, gonna have to have a discussion about that in the in the relationship. But if it's just a friend, and you know, hopefully the my significant other isn't coming after me for liking my friend who's also just happens to be a female for a regular post on social media. All right. Good win. Jeffrey, what, what you were going to say, what, what's your thoughts on liking pictures on social media? Uh, um, it goes down to confidence for me. Um, I, I mean, this is true for me. A young lady decided she didn't want to see me anymore because I was liking pictures on Instagram. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. You post pictures on Instagram just like these ladies that I'm liking. And you get tons of likes, mm. and I don't say anything about it. But if I like a pic, it's a problem. And what I found to be the case with her was she was focused on what she felt that she wasn't getting. She had all of my attention in reality. She had all my effort in reality. She had full access to me in reality. But virtually, she was so focused on what she wasn't getting that she decided that what she had wasn't enough. I call that destination envy. You get to one point and you got everything you want, then you see something else you want. Now you got to go to that space because you're no longer satisfied with what you have. And so when we broke things off, I told her, I said, hey, I want you to really keep this in mind now. You just broke up with me over social media. And so, uh, you know, that's it. I, I think it goes down to confidence. It's no big deal to me. You know, I'm, I'm with you and other people wishing they were with you. Why would I waste that over a wish when I got the reality? That's all I got. Ooh -wee. Um, um, what was that phrase again? Destination, Destination envy. envy. Destination envy. <laughs> Man, y'all. <laughs> we, we, yes, sir. We, we get your notebooks out. <laughs> Destination envy. Wow, love that. One. All right, J James and Gerald. Let me let me get y'all on in on this next question. My girl Demetria, she's got a question. She said, "Are most men okay dating long distance?" 
What's your thoughts on that? Dating long distance. Uh, James, you go first. Hey, well, why don't you let Gerald go first? Gerald, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, so actually, I uh, I did it. Uh, I did it once uh, out of Boston. I was dating this young woman that was in uh, Baltimore. Um, and it went on for about a year. Um, and we, you know, we built and developed a really close connection and we're still friends today. It didn't work out, uh, overall, but we, it wasn't the distance that was the issue. I actually like the distance because it, it helps you build a deeper connection with the individual. Um, you're not in their space all the time. They're not in your space all the time. And you just build so much anticipation for when you meet, right? Um, this I don't know how many fellows here remember just the old fashioned style of writing a letter to somebody and sending it in a post and, you know, waiting for that person to read it. And then they, you know, send you back a letter. So you become pen pals and you exchange communication and you just get engrossed by putting your imagination to use and reading between the lines. Right. So um, long distance relationships, I'm okay with. Okay. James, how about you? What's your thoughts on long distance relationships? I'm going to be the contrary to Gerald on this one. Okay. That's what <laughs> I, can't, I don't like them. I don't like it. I mean, and that, that goes from a couple of things that I've seen even in my practice of where you have someone that um, they'll do the proverbial once a month, two times a month or so meetings. And they go, they go to dinner, they go to movies, they go to have sex and everything like that. Then the weekend's over, they go back home. And so when you have that, then all of a sudden now they want to make it official. One moves to the other state and then now they're like, okay, this is the same person I was doing and having fun with when we were just weekend visits and month. You don't know that person because <laughs> you don't know the day to day, man, that goes along with that individual. You don't know how they fart. You don't know how they sleep. You don't know whether they have a bad day at work. You don't know what it looks like if they have borderline personality disorder, bipolar. You don't know what it is like if they have an alcohol issue or anything like that. People show you who they want to show you at times or so like that. But I like to see things in vivo. And again, too, for me, the issue became, you know, it's fun getting on a plane and flying to Chicago, flying to LA or so like that. But then it gets old or so like that because sometimes you want that person right there with you. So I think it's person specific what an individual wants, whether it's long distance or just right in your face. Yeah. Hometown. That's good. That's good. You know, as I think about it, uh, I was in a long term, I was in a long distance relationship uh, one time and uh, many, many years ago. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I understand exactly, James, exactly what you're saying. You know, uh, the person comes and there's always in the back of your mind, there's only three days. <laughs> she only won't be here for three days. So like whatever got on your nerves, you can just say, you know, what, I'll bite my tongue, She, you know, uh -huh. for, for a couple of days and, and this will be over. And um, and but, you know, there's there's so many little pockets of things that you miss that. It sometimes it just it's just it's just it's just not worth having because then you, if you marry that person or you like you guys move in together and become a, a real couple, you really start to see the real person, uh -huh. you know, not the, not the show that they put on for the weekend, uh -huh. but for the the real person and and you don't you know in some ways like unless you're with somebody day to day it's very difficult to really know them. Matter of fact, look, it's hard to it's hard to really know somebody that you see every day. True. So you know it's really difficult to get to know somebody. Um, their their highs, their lows, their their ups, their downs, the things they like, the things they don't like, the things that you can't stand, don't want. There's there's a lot. There's a lot. So, um, yeah, I, I say tread lightly. I, I'm not I'm not totally against it. But, mm, <laughs> it, it, you know, because because trust me, there, there could be somebody might meet a woman who is amazing, who fits just right. right. But she lives, you know, three states away, four states away. Um, so maybe that's good. You know, maybe sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So, Kelvin, let, let me let me offer some pushback on that. Right? Okay. Because when you meet someone and you go in through that dating stage, what are you doing most of that time, right? You're talking on the phone. You're texting and talking on the phone. Mm -hmm. The same level of communication you're doing when this person is in another state. Mm 
Yeah. If they're a busy professional, you're a busy professional. You're not seeing them more than once every week or once every other week, right? So technically you're in a long distance relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And with the advent of technology, you, you know, you're FaceTiming, you're doing video calls with that person. I don't see much difference in if you're an actively busy person, you have a schedule and you've literally got to you say, look, let's plan out date nights and stuff, which you would have been doing anyway in a regular relationship in the same city. That makes a difference between the person living in another state. Right. Um, I think it's really dependent on how rich your level of communication is with this individual. Can you build deep connections? Right. Are you able to make these connections, these emotional ties without physically being in that person's space? And that's a skill set not everybody has. I'm, I'm, don't get me wrong. Right. Um, so, I mean, for some, it's going to be easier. Like you said, it's a case by case basis. Case by case. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, who, who wants to push back on that? Uh, Jeffrey, what's your thoughts on, on that, on what he said? You know, um, the thing about long distance and the thing about real period um you get out of them what you pour into them um i've done long distance relationships before do them again um because the way that i like to express the way i like to um be loved it, it's much more um it has to have room for spontaneity if you three four hours away there's only so much spontaneous things I can do or so many spontaneous things I can do. But if you're across town, I can say, hey, put this on. Be ready in 30 minutes. I'm coming to get you. Um, so those things for me, um, or if I want to want to be loved. Um, I do understand exactly what Brother Gerald is saying uh, when, you know, when some people don't have that skill set, some people aren't able to do this, that, and the other. I completely agree with that. At the same time, you know, there's some things that other people can't do. And some things some other people can do something different that makes them just as valuable and their um, their dating style equal. It's just a matter of making you love the way that you want to love and you align yourself with someone who loves you the same way. Mm -hmm. That's all I got on it. Agree. Agree. Uh, my girl, Octavia Bright, she said, I feel you really don't know a person until you move in together, whether mm. it's long distance or not. Huh. What, what do you guys think of that? I agree to some sort. Yeah. I, I, I mean, and, and the reason I say that is, again, it comes with the living space. When you see that person, when they're, uh, they don't have the makeup on, when they don't have the three-piece suit on, when they don't have everything all put together or they haven't got up in uh, – in the morning to get in front of a zoom call and they got their uh, face put on and looking all like they're looking. I think you get to see that person stripped down and for who they are and you get to explore that and see, okay, is this someone that I can work with? Is this somebody that I can, I can do, um, uh, not necessarily life, but I can do now with, I mean, because yeah. sometimes man, after you kind of encounter some of those exchanges, you're like, all right, I'm out of here or so like that. Um, I have this Kevin, you've heard me say this before. Everybody can't ride the ride. And my point is with that is that not everybody's equipped to handle people for who they truly are. And so, yes, you do need that transparency, you, transparency. you do need that interaction to see because that's going to tell you quickly. Is this something that I can do or not? Yes. Well said. Well said. We got some good comments coming through. So, you guys, I want to I want to transition a minute to. um something that i found let me see if i can get my computer to to uh, work with me on this um uh, 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 i needed to do that before <laughs> In the meantime, Gerald is uh, working up some intrigue for these ladies. They are dying to find <laughs> out what he looks like behind that camera. What is the whoa? Is that a new Ooh. filter? Is that the intrigue filter? <laughs> 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 
you got jokes, Josh. You got jokes. Okay. <laughs> Man. That's, yeah, they, they really are beating the door down. They want to know. You know, Josh, back when I, I was a young man. Go ahead, brother. You know, that that uh, brother Gerald has, that's what the TV that's what the TV did when TV was a burn off or you didn't <laughs> have cable for certain off. channels. Yeah. It would look yeah. just like that. Yeah. <laughs> and you would keep looking and you would keep watching anyway because you wanted to see channels that you didn't have. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. All right, fellas, I, I want y'all to see something here. Um, so what you are looking at, I, I found a little article, the best cities for single men. <laughs> Believe it or not, there Boston's are, in the house. This is the list for the best places for single men to find Mrs. Wright. Number one is Baltimore. <laughs> Baltimore, Maryland yes, is the number one city for men to find single women uh, because of the ratio. Philly is next. Washington, D.C. is after that. New York City after that. Boston, Nashville. Oh, they, they, there you go, James. <laughs> Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit. Fort Worth. Oakland and Cleveland is, the, is in the top 10 cities. Places for fellas to find Miss Wright. Fellas, it, so... So if you guys want to, um, you know, take a road trip and you're looking for um, Miss Wright, she might be in one of those cities. Josh, she, you see that Philly, right? <laughs> I am a big Philly fan. I, I go up there often. Yeah. But where's Atlanta? Where? Why is it Atlanta on that list? I don't know. Hot, let, let, hot, let, hot Atlanta. Let's see. Let's see. What? Uh, no. I, I will say when I lived in Atlanta – it's very one of the most beautiful uh, areas for women, and very kind and sweet. Yes, 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 yes. Um, now I, I got a, I got another one. Now, now of course I got to do the the opposite side. And here we go. Uh, there we go. Best, best cities for single women. Guess who? Who can guess where the best city is for single women? I, I, before I pull it up, I'm, I want you to guess. They did Washington. a poll. Tell me, hmm. which, Miami. Which city do you think is the best city for single women to find men and, and just to have a great life? You say Miami, Josh. Yeah. Dallas, Texas. All right, we got Dallas, we got Miami. Gerald, what do you say? Washington. Washington. All right, James, what do you say? <laughs> I don't know. Portland, Oregon. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. The best city, cities for single ladies looking to date and work based on actual data. The answer is Atlanta. Wow. <laughs> I know none of y'all saw that coming. <laughs> look, look, my man, Tom, look, Tommy Graves on here, uh, Josh. <laughs> he said Anchorage, Alaska. Now, now Tom, Tom is right, though. Like, I, don't, I, didn't see, I didn't see Anchorage, Alaska on that list. <laughs> But I know that like the ratio is like something like two hundred to one, yeah. um, for you know two hundred men to one lady or something like that. It's real heavy, so I don't know why I didn't make the list. But um, yeah, Atlanta is number one city for women to find available bachelors for for dating and for love and for going out and for having a great life. Number two is Denver. Number three is San Francisco. Number four is San Diego. And number five is Portland. <laughs> James, you said it. You called it. 
noticing yes, a, pa- yes, noticing a pattern here. Yes. <laughs> look, look, look. Let me let me see y'all. y'all the ladies, they they're uh, they're sharing their thoughts. <laughs> they they laughed at Atlanta. Keisha had a good laugh about Atlanta. <laughs> Lord, Samia, you know it's it's, it's it's all in the ATL. Yes, yes. Houston, PA. See, y'all was wrong. Hey, Josh, um, you got some fans in here too. So, some some ladies is like, uh, Josh is kind of sweet. <laughs> I work with my strengths. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And I have blue eyes. <laughs> yes. I've I've been told on a number of occasions recently, actually. Is that right? About my blue eyes. <laughs> Yes. So, um, come on now. so, so you guys tell, tell us, tell us some more, um, some, of the, some more little tips, right? So let's say ladies, y- y'all can drop your questions, keep your questions coming. Um, yes. Keep your questions coming. Demetrius says, yes, it's true. You don't know someone until you fully move in together. Fellas, talk to me about this. How can you, without going so extreme because that's 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 kind of extreme right w- without going to the extremes what ways can you really get to know a woman not not not, not let's say not necessarily because she's long distance but talk about some ways that you can really get to know a woman um you know on the inside really get to know her heart and to see if you guys are going to be a good fit I know this is gonna come off uh, the wrong way, but sp- spend the spend the spend the night. Okay, um, tell me about that. Not and not necessarily anything intimate, but you could see how she is before she goes to bed, when she gets up in the morning, how she starts her day. You know, I, I when I was the the one of my previous relationships, I tried to spend as much time with with that person as possible and see. How they were throughout the day, how they interacted with people, who, how they talked on the phone, you know, the their, how they got ready, what they did, you know, it, it, that really tells a lot about a person. So I feel like spending as much time together with them, but it, you know, if if you can, if you like what they look like when they wake up, and they like what what you look like when you wake up, I mean, I think that goes a long way. Because okay. we always don't look our best. Yeah. yeah when we yeah. wake up and got the morning breath and hair is all over the place. Okay. All right. Gerald, you got your camera going. You, you got it. You got it. At last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You did a wardrobe change, too. At last. Yeah, I changed up uh, the background and everything. Yeah, um, good. So, tell, so, tell us, uh, how, how about the inside? Like, how can you really get to know somebody on the inside? My gift is discernment. So for me, it, what I'm going to explain may come across easy for me, but it's, again, it's not a skill set that everyone has. So for me, I just I just spend time asking questions, spend time making observations, seeing them in their natural habitat, right? So seeing them, what they look like and what they do in and around their family around their own space, right? And you pick up on things like that. You know, when you go over their house or their apartment or whatever it is, you see how they react. You see what they do. And I, and I get it. And doing a lot of the dating phase is a lot of um, facades and, and prompt and, and, and different shows that you're putting on for the individual. So you're showing them your best self. But if you're a keen observer, you you will pick up things and you will pick up nuances in their in their behavioral patterns, and that's that's how, what I do. Um, I don't necessarily have to move in. There are things that you know you're going to learn about that individual, and you know you're going to end up having to weigh that anyway. Are the positives or do the positives outweigh the negatives? Right? Can I stand this? So I can tell you. Let me <laughs> let me give you a little scenario. When I was in my twenties. My, my rule was this, if I went in her bathroom and she had underwear hanging in the bathroom, I was a deal breaker. I'm done. Like that ain't going to work. You know, it just, it just doesn't fly with me. Right. 
Now, would you believe in my 40s, that's not an issue for me, right? Because it just, it just isn't, right? It's just not that important to me today. But 20, 25 years ago, it was. It was, it was a major thing for me. It was like, that's, that was important. But today mm. it's not. So um, I think with time, you know, your ability to discern and reason with someone's <clears throat> sensibilities is really what's important. So that's yeah. my take on it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, you guys, let, let's talk about uh, the opposite now. We, we talked a lot about attraction and, you know, uh, confidence and what you see on the inside and all that. Um, what are some major turn offs? We want to talk about the turn offs. What just like makes you just like, you know what? That's it. <laughs> I can't take this. James, you go first. Uh, lack of accountability and entitlement. Uh, I don't do that. Tell me about know. that. What does that mean? Um, people that are looking for uh, traditional values in a modern sense when they want to play by modern rules. Uh, that doesn't really work too well with me. Um, it's it's one of those things is you can't have it both ways. This isn't Burger King. I'm not Burger King, and I'm not a fry man or a man, you know, a burger flipper. And so <laughs> it's just one of those types of situations. And and I'm again, I'm just gonna speak for me in this dating um, pool or so like that, I think that sometimes we've gotten to a place where um, people have um, drank the Instagram Kool-Aid. They drank the social media Kool-Aid. And because of that, they believe that all men are, are going to act and respond in a certain type of way. And so once I see that type of situation, it kind of signals to me that that's maybe not the person that I want to be around. Because it first starts with me as an individual. And I tell any of my guys, my, uh, my brothers this, is that you have to kind of find out who you are and how you look as you are matched up to that person. If you're not seeing or getting the results that you would like to, then it may be saying something in that moment with that person, respectively. Wow. Good stuff. Good stuff. Josh, major um, turnoffs. I can't take it. <laughs> we're finished. Um, if you do gonna, this, we're done. Uh, I'm going to tie into some of the previous statements um, and saying long distance relationships, I have experienced them previously. I feel like online dating is very similar to an on, uh, a, a long distance relationship because you're not really seeing that person, especially in the beginning, you know, when you're trying to get to, to know them. And then, you know, when they are kind of maybe ghost you or they don't talk to you, respond to you in a, in a, in a timely manner, that's a turnoff. Um, I was thinking about what James said with, about social media and, um, you know, social media is people at their best. And, and a lot of people don't realize when they're looking at social media and they're looking at other people and they're saying, Oh, you know, comparing themselves to, to other people. It's a, it's a highlight reel. So you can't, you can't compare yourself to, to social, to social media and Instagram. Cause people, most people aren't going to be posting them having uh, an ugly cry <laughs> in the shower. You know what I mean? So, um, uh, but one other thing too, I was thinking of a recent uh, female interest they did not have a, an available schedule. Well, that, that was a turnoff. Mm. You know, are you available? Let's get together. Oh, no, I'm too busy. I got this, that, the other. And it's just on and on and on and on. Just when do you have time for me? It's mm -hmm. not, you, don't, you don't have time for me. It's, it's a big turnoff. So, I'm, you know, I, I don't mind revisiting. But, you know, it's kind of like come over, check. No, you're too busy. All right, well, I'm going to continue on so yeah not having an available schedule is a, is a big turnoff yeah that, that's something that i have the conversation with the uh with our uh superpower women who you know they they're they got it right they got got it everything got the career got the business got the car got the house and all of these things and they say well you know what if if the right man comes along i'll make room that's that's the famous saying maybe you maybe you will and maybe you won't Mm. You know, Jeffrey, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, with a turn offs, or you can make a comment about yeah. what I just said. 
you know, for for me, major turnoffs is the um, I got what I, I, I coined called <laughs> female arrogance, mm. and it's where a, a woman will say something like, you know, in a relationship, I allow the man to lead, or I'll, I'll allow the man to be the man, as if you have final say over when a man is a man or when a man is going to lead. No. What you have to understand is that when a man is comfortable in his masculine energy and a healthy type of comfort, not a toxic type of comfort, that you him to or allowing him to is completely irrelevant behavior. He's just going to do what it is that he does. And so when you exemplify what I call, again, feminine arrogance, you place yourself at the center of the relationship the happy life syndrome. If you're not focusing on making me happy and I'm not focusing on making you happy, we don't have a balanced relationship. And quite frankly, very soon, you're going to be single. That's all I got. Mm. <laughs> so so there's something wrong with happy wife and ha happy wife, happy life. Um, uh, I heard a brother say it should be happy husband, oh, yes. <laughs> happy life. <laughs> you know, if, if 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 I'm happy, oh, it's happy spouse, happy house. Yeah, we'll, we'll say it again. Happy house. Happy, what was it? a happy spouse, happy house? Hmm. Yeah, good stuff. You you freezing up a little bit, Jeffrey? Yep. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> so so look look, Samia wants to know where is he. Where is this man? Look, we got a whole set full. <laughs> you know, men who are uh, who are thinking. Look, you want to know where he is? I showed it to you. I'll show you again. <laughs> where is he? Here he is for the ladies. There he is. This is where he is. Atlanta. Denver. San Francisco, San Diego, and Portland. This that's where he is. Get on the plane, get out of your house, go find him. He does exist. Now, I, I'm just joking with that, but um, I I really do believe that. Like sometimes it really does come down to geography, right? If if you got all the stuff and you're just ready, really ready for love. Sometimes just you just need to get out of your little city, your little town, uh, where you know everybody, and um, and explore your 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 borders, man. Expand your borders. You know, I don't I don't know whatever it is you're into. To me, that's that's the thing. I hear people encouraging women to go uh, go down to the golf course and go hang out in front of uh, Home Depot. <laughs> you know, and all these things. And to me, like that, I mean, that's okay if that's what you want to do. Um, but I believe that if you get it into the thing that you are passionate about and love your life, there's nothing more, there's, n there's nothing sexier, uh, more attractive than a person who absolutely loves their life. What, what do you guys think about that? <laughs> Samia said, I, I agree. Am I, am I still breaking up? I, I think you're a little better now. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with what you said. Um, you know, someone who absolutely loves their life, because when you when you're whole, and when you're loving yourself from a a place of abundance and and you know gratitude, you tend to attract people to you like that. And when people who are the opposite, those emotional vampires come up, uh, Brother Gerald was talking about discernment. Your discernment, your whole spirit and character wards them off. So when you do operate from a space of gratitude, um, a healthy self uh, confidence and things like that, you do tend to attract more like-minded people. So heal yourself and find yourself in a better relationship. Yes, 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 yes. Penny said, there are good men everywhere. You attract what you are, mm -hmm. what you project. Mm. Well said, I believe it. I believe it. But they're they listen, but the numbers don't lie either. <laughs> Let, let's be honest. Uh there's you know, there are certain places that have a better lifestyle for 
may be the person that you're that that you're interested in. And look, and you're not a tree. You can live anywhere in the world. So, you know, expand your mind, expand your life. All right. Um, th- did we get all the all the uh, all the turnoffs from everybody? I think we did. I think we did. Um, there's, there was a couple more questions that came through. Ladies, a- ask your questions. She said, um, "Lyrical Graphics says I had this qu- conversation with my dad and my brother in my early 30s when I made that exact statement. I argued." And argued, and they broke it down just like that. I got it, and never made a mistake again. I'm not sure which point she, which point she's talking about in that, um, but I, I'm going to assume that she's talking about um, expanding your borders and and uh, finding love and and um, you know, getting out of your little small town. So, you guys, let's talk a little bit more about attraction. Um, you know what what's What's something that you would like uh, the ladies, somebody that's listening to this conversation tonight, like what's something that you want them to like, how about some, some, some fast action um, tips that you can give to a lady tonight uh, on this topic? Uh, let's, let's, let's start with you, Gerald. So it's going to be both my like and my dislike for me. So emotional intelligence, I think we've, we've heard that word or that statement before. But it's very important. Um, if you're if you're a little seasoned and you've been out there for a while, you, you should be aware of who you are. You should be aware of your weaknesses, your strengths, and your vulnerabilities, and you should be working on them. So I think it's very, very important and it's very attractive to me. If I meet someone that is fully aware of where their triggers are and they can they can articulate that they can express that to me and say hey you know i'm working on this you know that way within the relationship we're not accidentally triggering each other we're not setting off landmines and leaving things for you know just what ifs right or the unspoken thing where when you leave she's pissed because you somehow crossed over a boundary that you had no idea about right so and she was triggered or he you know he was triggered or whatever the case is so i think it's very very important for me for a a woman to have started her journey on either healing from the trauma of her past or having enough emotional intelligence to know where she is currently um, and where she desires to be and what steps she's going to take to get there so that's a plus and a negative for me okay Good stuff. Uh, James, how about you? I'm just a piggyback on what Gerald said, because I, I do agree um, looking at emotional intelligence as well as, again, knowing uh, emotional intelligence as well as communication. Um, it's one to be self-aware, but also to being able to communicate that effectively to your partner, you know, whoever they may be. Um, I think that sometimes communication, I mean, it's a buzzword within relationships, but it gets... Um, kind of glossed over why because i don't think people really effectively know how to communicate especially with certain parties um they maybe they'll talk but they're not really talking you know and there's layers and there's levels to us and so understanding again how me knowing who i am as well as me being who i am how that affects that person specifically and being yeah. honest with yourself again like i told you earlier Kel, everybody can't ride the ride everybody can't handle who you are and it is okay. I mean, I think that is the best part about it. If I can't be my true self in that moment with you, and if she can't be who she is, then let's cut it short quickly. Hmm. Good stuff. Uh, uh, Josh, how about you? Um, <clears throat> I, I kind of agree with the same of what uh, Gerald and James were saying about the intelligence. Uh, I've had some... Uh, a couple of relationships that just went very deep in that way. Um, another thing I was, would like to say, you were saying, what would you say to women who are listening is I would like to see more aggressiveness from women. Okay. Hold on. Go get- we, 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 you know, we're going to have to stop right there. <laughs> tell, tell them what that means. What's that uh, mean? It shouldn't always be the man's game to come pursue women. I think that, you know, 
if you want, if you're fighting for equality and feminism from the seventies, it's time to go get your man. You know, go after, go, go approaching a man if that's what you know. It, it shouldn't always be uh, the man's job. I, I, I mean, I like pursuing women and and the you know all that stuff, but I think that a lot of times I see on on different forums and different places where women are saying, you know. I, I'm trying to attract this man. What do I say to this man? You need they need to be more aggressive. So okay, so that's so that's, want, that's my opinion. You want women to be more aggressive? <laughs> yeah. yeah, approach appro- approach 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 the man and 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 talk to them. Tell them what you want. Um, and one one additional thing, and you can come back to the aggressive th- this thing is, if if uh, women are ending up with with men. That there is not to their liking, they need to change change things. You know, they need to stop going for what they think is their preference. Mm. Ch- change your preference. Okay. Don't always be so cert- You know, the same. I like a extremely wide variety of women. I don't like to put a lot of, um, how do you say, uh, borders on on what I'm looking for. Because you know you can find women with so many different personalities and races and backgrounds, and it's just I I don't want to limit myself from any of that. So I feel like that's my what I would say to to a woman. Is yeah, don't All limit right. yourself. So so look, um, uh, Josh Josh uh, opened the he opened the Pandora's box. So we might as well jump into <laughs> we might as well let it all out. Uh, Jeffrey, how do you feel about a uh, women approaching men, a, a woman who wants to approach you? What's your thoughts? Um, you know, I, I don't have a problem with the woman approaching me. Um, just understand, ladies, that just because you approach doesn't mean you're qualified. Like, uh, Brother James said, you know, everybody, right, everybody. Um, but the approach step to a man, or let's speak for myself. If you if you approach me the right way, and I see common ground, and you know I see an attraction there, we're going to get to know each other. And if it works out, perfect. If it doesn't work out, perfect. You're still some met. I think you're nice and things like that. Part with feelings. Uh, sometimes, later, the approach can be you just putting yourself in a place to be found. You ain't never going to be found sitting at home. Watching uh, raising Canaan on stars, ain't nobody gonna break into your house and find you. <laughs> you got to be out, so you don't have to go out to the club. Just put yourself in position. If you don't want, to, if you don't want to approach the man, put yourself in position to be found by the type of man that you're looking for. Don't necessarily go to uh, the club if you're looking for a guy that's all about scholarship who's working on his doctoral dissertation, he's probably not in the club. He might be at a networking event. So um, no problem, ladies, if you approach, hey, come on, approach. Just know, understand, it's not, I ain't no easy win, sucker. You're gonna have to come with it. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> all right, so, so um, our, our girl, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl McLean, thank you so much for watching. She's watching on YouTube. Uh, she said, not a feminine woman. So she she thinks that it's not feminine for a woman to approach men. And uh, look, I got a I got a comment from uh, Penny that's getting a lot of uh, attention here on Facebook. She said, "I have never chased after a man, but I know how to show my interest without aggressively chasing him. A queen don't have to chase what God has sent." What's what's your thoughts on that? Hey, brother KJ. Yes, sir. Sorry, KTJ. Could I jump in on that one real quick? Lady, <laughs> ladies, I love y'all. Yeah, you know, y'all, y'all so smart and so educated. And y'all so soft and smell so good. I love y'all. But sometimes y'all get these little axioms and y'all stick to them like gospel. One of them is the egg doesn't chase the sperm. And that's true. The egg actually does not chase the sperm. However, the egg doesn't stay in the fallopian tube. It journeys out of the ovaries through the fallopian tube. And it ends up in a place where the sperm can find it. So whether you believe God's going to send you a man or not, you have to be able to be found. Uh, what, what's the name? Ruth? 
when she was looking for Boaz, you know, Ruth had a reputation already that Boaz had heard about. Ruth was a woman of good, um, good reputation. She sacrificed for her family. She had done all these things and her reputation preceded her. She actually didn't wait on Boaz. Her reputation found Boaz. And then when she was in the presence to be seen by Boaz, he already knew who she was. So ladies, don't sit back and say, God going to send me. No, no, no. There, there's merit to that. What you got to do because Boaz come see you. He can't break in to see you. He has to find you in the place to recognize your work. That's all I got on that. Good stuff. Good stuff. And you know what? I, I definitely agree with that. Um, you know, one of the things, the conversations I have is that I, I think that, you know, it's actually a good thing when a woman understands that she does have the ability to choose the person that she wants to have in her life. Right. You choose your car, chose your house, chose your career. And you, you know, for the most part, like you're happy because you had the right to choose. I, I don't necessarily see a bad thing with a woman choosing the person that she wants to, you know, somebody of the caliber that she wants to have in her life to, to go up and say, hello, putting herself in the place where the kind of people that she wants to connect with are likely to show up and go up and, and, and have a conversation with somebody. Like we put a lot of pressure on this talk about shooting your shot and all that sort of thing. And, like it, I don't think it has to be that that pressure. It's, it's just it's just making friends, right? So when I'm when I'm uh, when I'm coaching, I'm, I tell them, look, go out friend finding, not husband hunting, right? We're friend finding. So you, you don't know if it's going to be a match. You don't know if it's not going to be a match. So you're just going and putting yourself in the place. If there's a um, if there's a if you're into tennis. And you got a ticket to go to Wimbledon, go to Wimbledon, right? And be around the people that you love, that, that, that doing the activity that you love, and make friends in that environment. And you know, friends become lovers. That's the way it goes. That's the way the song go. <laughs> so, can, can I offer? Uh, I wanted to echo James. He said earlier that a lot of some of these modern women want to have traditional sentiments, but conflicting modern ideologies, right? So someone put in the chat earlier, um, not a feminine woman, a feminine woman wouldn't be assertive enough or shouldn't be assertive to go and proposition a man or shoot her shot, right, with a man. And I think that's, that's, that's a clear example um, where we see traditional ideologies conflicting with what they want from, you know, in a modern context, because it's that same woman that's going to tell you she deserves this or she deserves that, but wants to play coy or wants to be in a, you know, in a position where the man chase chases her, right? We have to be clear about what our expectations are. State what your expectations are. State what your likes are. I don't think that makes you any less of a feminine woman if you are able to assert your, you know, your your tastes, your likes, your desires. Right. That makes you no less being feminine. Now, if it's the it's the way, the style of that approach that can, you know, detract from your femininity, right? Can make you look in a certain way or come across in a certain way. But the actual desire to communicate your 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 like, it's the same as flirting, right? It's no it's no different than flirting, except you're not over here batting your eyes, laughing and giggling with your girls trying to get his attention, where you're just walking up to him and say, "Hey, what's your name? My name's Jessica. You know, I think you look pretty attractive, or I think you know something yada yada. Can I get to know you, right? Um, so." We've got to get out of that 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 paradigm where you want to hold on to traditional standards, but still want modern ideology to be mixed in with it. it, it there isn't one that conflicts with the other. You've you've got to just communicate and say what you want. So that's my advice to women. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, how, how about you guys? Um, 
you know uh who who has a, who hasn't spoken on that yet uh, on, on the whole whole approaching a man and uh, you know we, we got we got some good comments on this um penny said respectfully i disagree like i said <laughs> i know how to show my interest and be seen and i have ha never had a problem attracting men Okay, that well, that's good. Friend finding is not chasing. I agree. Friend finding is not chasing. Um, you know, so, so but there, you know, there, listen, this, this whole thing of attraction, it is, you know, it's as old as time and relationships and connection itself, right? Women have always known how to get a man's attention without necessarily, you know, being uh, forceful, you know? There, there was this move that the old school ladies knew how to do for for a shy guy who stood in the corner that worked every time. Y'all know what that is? Y'all know what the move is? It worked every time. It was this. You come here. <laughs> it works every time, right? Because a guy a lot of times is standing there in his head right? He, he's thinking about the lady. Is she married? Is she taken? Does she have a boyfriend? Uh, can I even afford to talk to her? Um, you know, would she even like me? Am I handsome enough? Am I like all this stuff in the head, right? And if you stay in your head long enough, what, what, what's the guy going to do? <laughs> Nothing. He, he's gone, right? You're going to talk yourself right out of it. So I always encourage you, like, look, if you're, you're somewhere and you don't really want to, let's say you don't want to do the whole shoot your shot thing, but you see this guy keep checking you out, but he's not saying anything, right? This point, come here. I, I don't know a man a, alive except Jeffrey that <laughs> that, that wouldn't come. <laughs> Every other guy I know would, would, would come in if he's if he's interested in her, he's coming. Jeffrey, uh, no, you come here. <laughs> Probably something like that. What would y'all think about that? Nah, I wouldn't do it like that. I say, uh, okay, I, I would go over there. I'm like, what you want? <laughs> 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 but no, I, I, I would respond favorably to that. I wouldn't, you know, I'm not that type of dude that. You know, wouldn't entertain the thought of a woman saying, come here, you know, no big deal. Just be careful now, because when I come over there, don't don't get it twisted now. This, this is a hell of a ride. <laughs> <laughs> All right, J Josh, what do you think? What do you think about that move? If a woman told me to point it at me and said, come here, then I'm going over there. Going over there. Yeah, I, I want to see what happens. You know, you, you can't put too much, um, you can't get too much in your head. You know, it's like, I I put in the chat earlier, I like making women as friends too. And then you, and then you kind of touched on it that, you know, go, go friend making, you know, cause I mean, I'm always up for making more friends besides that. If you don't work out with her, she might have a friend that's. <laughs> you might be interested in. So you just open up your, your network for, uh, you know, relationships that has happened to me before. So, um, you know, I'm definitely, I'm down if, if, if a girl, you know, is pointing at me and being more aggressive and asking me to come out on the floor. Yeah. But, um, what, what's, uh, uh, Josh, tell me, tell me the best place a woman can meet you. Hmm. Where would a woman meet you? a good question um i like to go out i'm outdoors a lot go out like hiking and different events um i, I i'm a i'm a chef so i like to cook I'm, I'm i'm constantly out looking for different ingredients and going to restaurants um i like a lot of social activities so anywhere where you can meet people, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out there. Okay. Good, good answer. James, where can a woman meet you? Uh, well, um, not like Josh, I'm not a chef or anything like that, but I do like social activities. Uh, hold, hold, hold that thought. It just popped in my head. 
Josh is a real chef. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> Josh, it just came back to me. L- ladies, Josh is a real chef. Like, like not, not for play play. Yeah. He, he's gotten he's gotten paid, <laughs> made a living as a yeah. chef. That and that guy's good too, man. And Go I ahead. can teach you how to I can teach you how to cook. <laughs> that's not a problem. I was thinking about this earlier, like, hmm, you know, with it, 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 what I'm looking for, what makes a woman attractive to a man is, is, can she cook on that list? Is, is that on that list? Uh, and I'm like, you know, I can cook. I, I'll cook. I don't mind. And I'll, I'll, if she's open, I will teach her how to cook. That's no problem. Uh, so look, he, he going to get them. You're going to get some DMs, buddy. <laughs> Cause look, Bring it. Look, Josh used to wear the white hat. You know the the, the you know the white hat and the listen. And, and the I got a recipe. Hat. I got a recipe for love. Bring yeah, it. With the, <laughs> look, look, he, he used to have the, the temperature thing in the sh- in his sleeve, like he was a real guy. <laughs> so uh, he, he make it happen. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, James. I mean, it's just I mean, social events, uh, parties, uh, so, um. Fine dining atmospheres, um, galas, um, sporting v- events. I mean, things along those lines. I mean, mm-hmm. just getting out and just seeing the sights and things. Like, that's where I like to kind of find myself, especially after COVID has lifted and things are starting to open back up. So, All right. All right. Gerald, in, in your day-to-day life, where can a woman meet a man like you? Well, there are two places from September to June where you can find me and where I spend most of my time first is anywhere around church activities. I am a man of God, I'm a minister of the gospel. So I'm always doing something in and around church. Secondly, <laughs> Hey, Hey, somebody was just like, Hey, glory. <laughs> Look, somebody, somebody just got in the spirit just now. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. <laughs> Secondly, uh, around that same time, you can find me anywhere in their academia. So I am finishing up, um, getting into applying into a master's program for next uh, July. So anywhere in academia, you'll find me and coffee shops because that's where I go study. Um, I spend hours and hours and hours in coffee shops where I'm reading, studying, writing papers and stuff like that. So that's okay. where I'm at. So so look, so a woman's at the coffee shop and she sees you across the table. What and she wants to she wants you to come over there to her or and you you know, she just sees you and she she wants to she wants to get to know you. What should she do? First thing I would say is, you know, just introduce yourself or just ask me if, if you know, can I buy you a cup of coffee and let's sit and talk. I put that book down, take my head out that book. If it's one thing I love to do, um, I'm a sociologist, right? So I study human behavior and I, I enjoy, you know, just having great conversation. I enjoy, I, I talk for hours. I've met women in places where we sat and talked for hours. I'm talking about four or five hours straight, just having great, great, great conversation. So um, just ask me if you want, if, I, if I'm interested in a cup of coffee or if she can grab a seat. What am I studying? What am I reading? Just ask the question and I, I'll let you in. Hmm. Uh, all right, Gerald. So I got, I got a better idea than, um, than for her to come over and ask to buy you a cup of coffee. Cause generally women are not going to do that. Most women won't, won't do that. All right. Uh, ladies, if you see, you see a guy like Gerald, he's sitting down and he's reading his book. You, you can ask him, you can ask him about the book he's reading. Okay. Uh, cause, cause trust me, look, I wouldn't even advise her to, to buy you a cup of coffee. I, I don't think that, I don't think ladies don't ask to buy him a cup of coffee. <laughs> I, I think it's going in the wrong direction. Um, you know, you're starting the buying process. You starting off with a dollar and I, I think that's the wrong direction for a woman to take. So I, I think, uh, showing interest in the thing that he's interested in gets his attention towards you. That works too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nick, my girl, Nikki Rogers, I met her in, in, uh, in Tennessee. 
my girl Nikki Rogers, she said, not going to buy the coffee. <laughs> she, she's not buying a coffee. <laughs> no, she should not ask, what are you talking? Look, uh, Peppy, Peppy said, no, she should not ask, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I'm definitely asking about the book and being genuinely interested is what Lyrical uh, Graphics said. So that's a good one. Jeffrey, how about you? In her regular life, in your, in your regular life, um, you're just living your life, just doing your thing. Where can a woman find you in your regular life? Um, an upscale security. She can find me doing a lot of stuff with my alma mater, Morris Brown College. Um, I'm really, really, really doing a lot there. Um, spending time with my granddaughter. And um, really, I mean, quite frankly, that's it right now. Um, those three things, the upscale cigar bar, and I really don't smoke that often. Um, Morris Brown and my daughter. That that keeps me very very busy right now, so I'm pretty focused um, in those those two areas. And my outlet is the upscale cigar bar. Okay, okay. So um, so the Morris Brown that- working with Morris Brown College is your uh, that's your social that's your um, uh, kind of your give back sort of thing. Is your your passion project? Uh, it, it because we are. Oh man. Yeah, and because we're on the road to uh, full restoration, you know that that has the lion's share of my time. Okay, okay, but but at the cigar bar, okay. Um, and up, she, Nikki Rogers said, "What bar?" She she he said, "Cigar bar." <laughs> y'all, y'all um, you can find me at a uh, fellowship. At fellowship, okay. That's a Cam Newton spot, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so look, so look, not just any cigar bar, a high end cigar bar. All right. Um, so that's correct. Yeah, that's so, correct. So, ladies, like, like, pick up on that, right? He he didn't say like the down down the street cigar bar, like <laughs> at the corner store cigar bar. Um, he's he's you gonna find Jeffrey at a high end, um, you know, cigar bar fellowship, N- Cam Newton. All right, <laughs> look, my girl Michelle, <laughs> she said, heading to the car now, drop the location, <laughs> get, to, get one in Dallas. <laughs> yes, yes, hilarious, yes. So, um, um, so let, let, what, what question you guys, um, think that I haven't asked that you think is important, uh, for women to know about attraction. Um, we, we could go, go around and get a little from everybody. Uh, James, how about you go first? Man. Find Gerald or find Josh. I got to think of one real quick. Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Gerald, go. Um, I think, uh, and as far as attraction, you can ask simple questions. Uh, I would, I would want for her to ask me questions in regards to what I'm looking for, right? Um, what am I attracted to? So that conversation. What are you looking for in, in a partner? Um, and I would obviously ask her the same question, but to be, be able to be frank, to have that conversation. Um, instead of carrying on four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 dates, and at the end of those eight, 10 dates, you know, you realize that this isn't what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. So have that conversation up front. I think it's important. You know, let's, not that we're, we're qualifying or, or setting disqualifiers early on, but we just want to be on the same same street, right? We want to play on the same side of the street. So tell me a little bit about what you're looking for, and I'll tell you what a little bit of what I'm looking for. And if we're compatible, we'll you know keep this going. 
I'd love to see you again. I think you you meet some of those criteria, and I'd love to get to know you better. Yada yada. Yeah. All right, Gerald, are you really ready for love? <laughs> so, after being married for fifteen years and then getting divorced, um. That was a tough question. I didn't know whether or not I was. And when I got back out in the dating world a couple of years ago, um, I thought I was ready. Um, and then I realized some things that were still needed to be processed. And I got myself in a relationship and realized that there was a lot that needed to be processed. So I took the time to go do that work, which is why I teach on it. I preach on it. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm all in it right now because of that. Um, and I help people get healthy because I think it's very important. So definitely I'm in a healthy place and I'm ready uh, for love, man. All right. All right, Jeffrey, what question um, may, have I not asked that you think is important for a woman to know about attraction? And, and you guys, if y'all like what Gerald said, let me see them thumbs up come through. Let me see some, let me see some emotion, some, some emoticons come through here, y'all. <laughs> if y'all if y'all hear something you like, let me hear it and uh, make sure y'all hit that donate. Donate at, at, at right there on the screen is right there. We need y'all support uh, to keep these things going. Yes, thank you for waking up. I love it, love it, love it. All right, Jeffrey, you're on. Um, really, I I would ask a variation. Of the question you just yes. asked, Gerald. Are you really um, ready and, and for love? The question is simply this, ladies. Well, well, almost. But the question for the ladies is, are you ready to love the man of your dreams? Because some women love the fantasy of a good man, a, a, a man with high standards and morals and, and everything he comes with. But the reality of being with a man like that, he's going to have some expectations of you. So are you ready to compromise on your system of success, you know, your own uh, paradigm? Are you, are, you, are you really open to that man's expectations? Because there is no man who knows his own self-worth, who has a healthy amount of self-confidence that's going to take all your stuff blindly. You're going to have to have some stuff from, uh, for him to um, bond with and you will be able to cleave to him. But if you stuck in your system, that means might just be your nightmare. So ask your question if you really are ready for the reality of a good man. Mm. That's that. All right, <clears throat> all right. You got a you got a little a little caught in the in the matrix, but I, I think we made it out. <laughs> I, I got what you I got what you said. I got what you said. <laughs> uh, I, all right, James, you ready? I mean, I like I, I like what Jeffrey just said. Yeah, like yeah. That. You know what? I, I think I kind of want to talk about that too. I like, like I like, like what Jeffrey. I like. I mean, I really I really dig that because, um, again, when you're dealing with someone who's official, who's got their stuff going or so like that, I mean, there are certain things they will tolerate and they won't. And I mean, and well, I don't want to quote that guy right now, not tonight. But they have <laughs> they have they have options. They got <laughs> options. They, they got options or so like that. And the quicker you come, the quicker you can leave. With that being said, I know it doesn't sound nice. I know it doesn't sound appealing or so like that. But it's just the truth of the day and age that we live in right now. And so, yeah, you have to be ready, man, to come with your best game. And if you don't, then that's cool. We can be friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ladies, are you really ready for love? Yeah. Good, good point, uh, Jeffrey and James. Are you ready for love? Um, and uh, before I get to Josh, how how does a woman know if she's ready for love? Gerald, how does a woman know? She has to be emotionally healthy. Um, if you if your your attachment style is based off of abandonment, it's based off of um, fear of being alone these types of things are not healthy for, for a relationship because they're, they're determinants for the relationship, right? You're not in love. You're in love because of something. So you've got to work through these things. And to get ready to be available or ready for love, you need to work on yourself. You need to work, as, as, as Jeffrey said earlier, becoming whole. 
that's mm-hmm. a process that takes some introspective looking and it takes some some deep deep sometimes psychological help that you have to go see someone for if you're still picking the same type of guy over and over and over and over again it's because you haven't processed something, right? Something in you that's looking for something. You got daddy issues, you've got mommy issues, you've got some sort of issue. And this is why you're you're constantly picking up the same type of person. So working through your own um, you know, emotional stuff or psychological stuff is important. And when you've when you become aware, right, when you're fully aware of where you are and where your deficiencies are and the things that you need to work on then you can start saying, I'm ready for a relationship. You're not ready until you work through these things. If you haven't, what's going to happen is all of your trauma is going to turn into triggers within the relationship. Mm -hmm. And they're going to, you're going to trigger each other left, right, and center. Right. And none of these triggers are healthy triggers. Think of the reason why your trigger exists, right? If you're, if you're a person that puts your hand over a fire, your nervous system immediately tells you that there's something wrong. It sends a signal to your brain. Your hand doesn't know your hand is hot. Your brain tells you that your hand is burning, right? It's your nervous system. So when you're triggered in a relationship, it's a trauma, right? The trauma is sitting at the root, way buried somewhere deep. And until you've parsed out why you're being triggered, whether that trigger is connected to another trigger and connected to another trigger or connected to something else, and then you start looking at the the linkages so you can figure out why these things are happening, you'll never find the trauma. And until you've done that work, every relationship you go into, you're going to continually trigger each other consistently. So that work is important. And when you've done that work, you've done that self-discovery. Now you can say, hey, OK, I think I'm ready and start making your way out there and, and test it out. It's real in theory. Hey, Kevin. Yes, sir. I want to um, piggyback on what um, Gerald just said real quick. I liken it to this um, sports illustration of a, um, a a football team drafting a, a new quarterback or so like that. That quarterback only has a window of time to prove mm. to himself mm. and to the community and the fan base mm. that they are that guy or so yeah. like that. If they go and they start making excuses and they're not accountable mm. in their actions about what they are doing, then they will not be there that long. If they are not willing to correct those things, those insufficiencies, if they cannot throw the um, ball on the fly, if they can't throw the slant, they can't throw the post, then they will not be there that long. There will be a yeah. replacement that will meet them very soon. Right. And so my point is, is that it has to get to a point where you're just saying to yourself, okay, in order for me to be that person in that man's life, there's something that I have to do on the fly. There's a, there may be some counseling, as Gerald may say. There may be some introspection work. There may be some just man, good old just man, just quietness <laughs> that, that I got to get to. So in order for me to get this desired situation that I want to, because it's there, but I'm in jeopardy of losing it if I'm not careful. Yeah, 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 yeah. That That's a great analogy. James, that's a great analogy. You know, um, as a as a football fan, I'm thinking of uh, uh, Carson Wentz, yes. <laughs> Josh knows from from the Philadelphia Eagles, right? A wonderful guy. He was great in the community. He was a good Christian brother. You know, he was a great leader. He 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 looked like a leader, um, but he couldn't win. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I know. Did you did you did y'all see that big side that uh, that? that <laughs> That Josh just did because it was Please frustrating don't. because don't he had started, all the things that he, he he had what seemed like the keys to help the team win, but he but he couldn't he couldn't put it all together, and so they he went from yay this guy he's our savior he's gonna take us to the top to uh, man get this guy out of here. And they ran him out of town. And maybe look, maybe he might go somewhere else. James, to to your analogy, maybe he might go to the next team, and boom. And so so it is in relationships. I mean, maybe I mean, some people it, are on the wrong team. I mean, it, it's just I mean, again, like we said, you um, well, people who again have those options or so. They're not going to continue to just trifle or just to waffle with someone over and over again, especially when they have vision, they have purpose, they have goals, they have destiny in mind or so like that. So I'm not going to continue just to 
We play these little games where things that should have been uh, diagnosed or then uh, kind of um, uncovered in the G League or in um, the CFL or in the college football freshman year or anything like that. Some of those things that we need to get up to speed on. Why? So because there's destiny, there's goals, there's things that I would like to do as well. And when we come together, we can accomplish those. But if we are just continuing to go over the same Mickey Mouse routines, <laughs> then what are we doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh, what's, what's your thoughts on that? You, you look like you you thinking you thinking good. You think <laughs> well, you got me you got me kind of going down the winds path, and I'm trying not to to disinterest the women on the football talk. So um, I'll just say that it was a difficult it, it was a difficult time for Wentz. You know, <laughs> uh, <you> know? <laughs> he had a he had a hard a hard time a hard go of it, but. Trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to keep this in with a relationship. Yeah. Because he got hit a lot, and his confidence went away. Mm. So you know, he maybe he needed some therapy. You know, <laughs> yeah, to to to, to, to kind of work out his situation with uh, you know, Foles kind of taking the ball and running with it and 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 succeeding. But uh, I think that. Gerald and James, I'm total in agreement with. You know, we kind of need to. I think, from what I've experienced so far, therapy is very important. I think everyone should should have therapy in their life, have someone to talk to other than their friends, because a lot of times their friends are either going to be going to kind of take them down the path and and co-sign on their stupidity, or you know the you know they're going to um, be too mean. Yeah, you know, about something, and they're not gonna, they're not gonna be helpful in the situation, and it's gonna be a turnoff. So, um, I think that we all could use more some, you know, a professional to talk to, yeah, about about situation, especially when you, uh, you know, if you're getting to be, I'm gonna be forty in August, if you got like twenty years of bad decisions, you better figure out why you keep making bad decisions, you yeah. know, and you because you're gonna bring that into the next relationship. And it might be a good one, but because you're used to making bad decisions, you're going to mess it up. So, um, and then a final comment uh, on attraction, put the phone down, mm. especially when you're with me. I want engagement. <laughs> I'm tired of you picking up the phone. And I, I, I am also guilty of it, and I'm working on myself. So, but I want, I want, look into these blue eyes. When when we are on a relationship, when we are on a date, look into my eyes and let's have a let's have a talk. Okay, that's the only way we're gonna we're gonna have a relationship. All right, <clears throat> uh, Jeffrey, <clears throat> give it give us your final final words uh, of connection as well as uh, let the people know what you got going on, so they can follow you, they can connect with you. If there's a woman who sees this and. She, she uh, thinks that you are Mr. Right. <laughs> Tell her what she need to do. All right. I appreciate the opportunity, man. And thanks so much for inviting me. Um, final thoughts, kind of echoing what uh, James and Gerald and Joseph have already said. Um, ladies, make a decision. Um, either you're going to be, either you are going to be in love with your trauma or you're going to be in love with your joy. One or the other. You can't have both. So make a decision. And if you have to do the hard work, once you're through with the hard work, those muscles, those love muscles become better. And you'll attract a better quality man to you. Um, you can find me on all social media as Talk With Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-E-R-Y, Talk With Jeffrey. Uh, hashtag it. Um, add it. Uh, everywhere except for Snapchat. I'm too old for Snapchat. I'm not snapping. I'm not chatting. I'm just not going to do it. Um, and um, I also do a radio show on Saturdays from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. We usually live stream that on Facebook off of my page. My page is public. So um, you can go there and check it out. All right. Yeah. Look, if you guys can, um, drop your, drop your, <laughs> drop your, your handles there in the comments. Um, and so Jeffrey, yeah, as, as you guys tell me, yeah, drop your handle there in the comments and, um, so people can follow you and they can connect with you. 
All right, Gerald, how about you? Give us your, your 30 second commercial. Uh, there's a woman who likes what you have to say. <laughs> there's some people who like what you have to say. They like your vibe. Uh, how can they get more of Gerald? My main platform right now is Facebook. Um, I have groups that I facilitate on Facebook. Um, I am on Instagram. Um, I'm Elder G or Elder Gerald. That's where you can find me or just Gerald Manning. You can look me up on Facebook or Instagram. Um, you can find me again socially in places that are in academia or um, church based in the Boston area. So if you're looking for someone to have great conversation with or someone to bounce some ideas off, you can reach out to me either way. Facebook is my primary, like I said. Um, I am in Clubhouse as well. Um, that's where me and you, Calvin, that's where we met. Um, uh, Inst uh, Instagram and Twitter. All right. Awesome. Awesome. James, people love your vibe. They love what you got to say. They want more of what you are up to. Tell them how they can do that. Well, first, first of all, man, my brother, my brother, my Mr. Platform Builder himself, Mr. Love, Coach Atlanta. I appreciate you, man, calling me, putting me on with these great group of guys, man. Hope one time we can do it again quickly. I mean, it's awesome. Um, you can catch me on, I'm on uh, all the different social media platforms, Mind of a Man Podcast, as well as James Bush, uh, Bush Counseling um, Services. Uh, let's see, uh, Mind of a Man podcast. We're coming out season three, that'll be probably next month, sometime or so, like that. Check us out. Um, we're on Apple, Stitcher, Deezer, uh, iHeartRadio, the, the list goes on and on. Um, as far as uh, the last words, last words, last remarks, or anything like that, ladies and gentlemen, we all are a prize. No, no one's higher, no one's lower than the other, or so, like that. Govern yourself accordingly. All right, all right, and Josh. Tell the people how they can follow you. Tell them what you're up to. Tell them what you're cooking next. <laughs> these ladies, <laughs> these ladies are hungry. <laughs> I might, I might have to do um, a cooking stream or something like that. Man, I, I used to teach cooking classes, so if they're interested, if you want to land a good, good man, right? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I am on social media currently i am on facebook i'm on a lot of different places um i'm actually going to be peeling myself off of a lot of them that's for another conversation but um i don't feel like there's as much privacy anymore for social media so uh, for now you can find me on facebook.com slash josh gamble j-a-m-b-l-e uh so hit me up say hello um yeah i'd like to do this have another conversation yeah man yeah man so so listen you guys this this is one of my first times in a long time doing this format like this and um it, it's been good man I, I i like the engagement uh and you guys who watch this let me know if y'all if y'all digging this if y'all like this style you like uh us mixing it up a little bit generally it's me uh doing my own thing on mondays but uh I, i'm a team guy you know i like i like uh having groups of people that working together, talking together, connecting, and uh, it just makes everything more interesting and more, more juicy, more, more fun. So if you, if you all, if you, if y'all digging this, y'all like uh, the way we did it tonight, uh, let me know. And uh, we'll continue to do more of these, uh, these sessions, just like this. I, I got a lot of friends that I could bring up here. I got, I got men, I got women um, and lots of, uh, lots of people who have plenty to say. I have a question. Yes, sir. How can people watch this later if they did get to watch it live? Okay. So uh, if you didn't get to watch this live, if you want to, if you want to watch this later on, you guys could go to my YouTube channel at Secrets of the Mind of a Man. Um, it's on YouTube. You can just type it in. If you can't remember that, just type in the Love Coach. I'm the only one that's going to come up, and this will be right there. It's, it, it's, it'll be available as soon as I hit stop. Um, so tonight, if you want to finish watching the rest of this, rewind. If you want to take notes um, and get some get some good, good nuggets, uh, you can do that as well. Um, it, it'll be live on the uh, Facebook channel, on the, on, uh, the Love Coach Atlanta Facebook uh, channel there. So you can catch it over there as well. 
You guys, and if you're interested in getting th some coaching, you want to get some, um, you could get the free, I got a free mini course going on called Finding the One at findingtheone.club. Um, I, I got a, a some great mini course and it'll lead you into the full course if you are interested in that. My, my cousin Crystal, she said, this was nice, Cuzzo. Thank you so much for coming through, y'all. If y'all enjoy this, um, please hit share, hit like, um, go on YouTube as well and, and hit hit that like button, you guys. And let's let's share the love. And I'll, I'll do more of these. I'll, look, look, I'm a person I want to do what the people want. <laughs> uh, it's not it's not about me. I want to share and connect with what the people want and um, and just be a blessing to the people. So. All right, you guys, till next time. Thank you so much. Till next time, peace and love. Y'all have an amazing night. See y'all next you week. Too, man. God bless. See y'all Monday. <laughs>